Hello. In this video, we're going to work through a coding bat problem that student asked me to work through a solution to. If you haven't tried this one, I do suggest you stop and actually try it before watching the video, because it's easy to watch someone's solution and say, that makes sense. It's a lot harder to try and come up, come up with it on your own. So let's dive in. Given two strings, return true if either of the strings appear at the very end of the other string, ignoring upper slash lowercase differences. In other words, the computation should not be case sensitive. Note str.2 lowercase returns the lowercase version of a string. So we've read the problem, and now we're going to look at the examples. So if the method end other is invoked, and we pass it the first parameter high abc, and the second parameter becomes abc, so these are our two arguments, it returns true, because we can see abc is at the end there. Second example, if the first parameter takes the value abc, the second one high abc, Again, we return true. Now, this one's not as obvious. So first thing we notice is that it's actually we need to take the first string, string A, and we need to check if it's the end of string B. So it's a little bit different. But also we notice that it's not case sensitive, meaning that we need to somehow check regardless of upper or lower case. In the last example, same thing. First parameter is ABC, second parameter is a, B, X, A, B, C, and so what I need to do is, because this parameter is smaller, I need to check if that is at the end there. So I've come over here and made up my own example. And so if string A is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and string B is A, B, C. So what I need to do then is I need to start by taking, if I was to inspect this, I see that B is a smaller string. So I'm going to underline the last three letters. And then I can do is I can write a loop. And what that loop is essentially going to do, let's slide this over a little bit actually. I've lost my mouse, there it is. What this loop is going to do essentially is it's going to start here at 4 and it has to go through to the end. So if we see the length of this string is 7 and the length of this string is three, what I need to do is somehow use these two values to start my counter at position four. And what I noticed is that seven minus three is four. So my counter can be set using i equals a dot length minus b dot length. So if we come back over here, we get an idea of how to start this problem. But the first thing that I notice is, is the problem that I don't know which one is the longer string. So what I'm going to do to start this problem is I'm going to declare two strings. I'm going to call the S1 LSTR, which is my long string. I'm going to call my second one SSTR, which is my short string. Now there's a 50-50 chance that I'm going to get this correct just if I guess you know, A, B, or B, A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by setting the long string to A and the short string to B. Now, because this question says that it is not case sensitive, so ignoring case sensitive, I'm going to do A.2 uppercase. So that will convert string A to uppercase and put it into L string in B.2 uppercase. So just what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to write my algorithm using these two variables, L string and S string, long string and short string. But again, this might not be correct. So what I have to do is I have to actually inspect if B dot length is greater than A dot length, meaning is, is the, the string B longer than the string A, that means that L string then becomes, oops, pardon me, L str becomes b.2 uppercase so what I've done now is I've con I've actually started off this problem by figuring out which one is the longer of the two parameters and then assigning them to the appropriate variable I've also converted everything to uppercase to make the comparison easier so we come back to here so what I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to start my loop at the end of the longer string, which in this case is 
is A, but at the position such that if my B has three letters, I need to start three back from the end of this string. And we said that in order to start my loop there, I need to go four, five, six in my loop. I'm going to set my, my counter to start at A dot length minus B dot length. If I come back in here. So in this case, it's not actually going to be a dot length minus b dot length. It's going to be the long, the long str dot length, so the, the length of the long string minus the length of the short, short string. And I'm going to continue this. I'm going to go right to the length of the long string. And each time i is equal to i plus 1. So let's review this loop line and let's make sure we understand what we're saying here. So again, if we take a look at this example, what I want to do essentially is because b is the shorter string, I'm going to compare. Let's see if we can get a different color here. I'm going to start by comparing this value to that one, this one to that one, this one to that one. So I'm going to set my loop up around the longer string. So if my string, for example, is a length of 7 and my shorter string was a length of 3, 7 minus 3 takes me to that index. So that's why when I look over here, I take the length of the long string minus the length of the short string to get my starting position. And then I'm going to walk all the way to the end of the long string. So I'm going to have to compare this value at index 4, at index 5, at index 6. So I say as long as the counter is less than the, the long string length, and each time I increase by 1. So now this problem is a simple if statement. So I say if, and I'm going to take the long str dot char at. So I'm going to take the character at that position. So we take a look here. So basically, I want to access this character right here. I want to access this character right here. So I'm going to take char at that position. And now I want to check if that's not equal to the short str. Now here's the problem. I want to look at the very first character. And so I have two options here. One is I could figure out some mathematical relationship that's going to offset my position from 4 in this case to 0. Or an easier way to do this is to introduce a secondary counter. And so this secondary counter is going to basically move along the shorter string for us. So basically, if the long string char at i is not equal to the short string char at ctr, then I return false. And this is an important idea with this problem, is that this is a type of question where as soon as you prove one thing is, is wrong, you can just stop. So essentially I say, is the long string at that char position not equal to the short string at that char position, at that position, I return false. If I make it through this whole loop, what do I return? Well, I return true. Now, there's one little problem I have here. Because remember, this counter is essentially helping me walk through my shorter string. So it starts at 0, then it goes to 1, then it goes to 2. What I can do now is I can do this. Each time I do an inspection, I manually increase that counter. So let's review. Step one, assign uppercase. So basically, I assign L string A uppercase. I assign short string B uppercase. And then this if statement swaps them if the B variable is longer. So this is a nice technique in general in that right away I just identify the longer of the two strings and then assign them to appropriate variables. Be sure, don't call this string short, string long, because those are actual variable names in Java. and You'll get an error. This counter helps walk, walk through short string. And then I set my loop up. This is my loop. So the count is equal and we always think of count, check, change. So the count is essentially, again, if we look at this example, I take my longer string and I subtract the length 
I take my longer string length and subtract my shorter string length, and that's always going to set me up for which variables I, ch I sorry, characters I check, because I want to check this one against this one, this one against this one, and this one against that one. I want to walk right to the end of the long string, because I want to check every character, and then I increase my counter by one each time. And now I've set up my if statement here, so this basically checks to see checks to see if the letters are different. And if they're different, I don't have to do anything else, so I just return false. This is a really important larger co concept in terms of working through these problems, is that when you're trying to work through a problem like this, you want to ask yourself, as soon as I disprove one case, can I exit? And if, if that's the situation, this is a nice approach here, because as soon as I show that two of the letters don't match, I'm out of there. And again, to walk through the, I use the counter to walk through the long string, but I make a separate counter to walk through the short string, so I have to increase that by one each time. And if I make it through this loop, I know the ends are the same, and hopefully this works. Uh-oh, I have a little mistake here. What do we have here? I need a typo somewhere. Let's pause and see if I can find this. How many of you guys saw my error when I was typing this out? Long string minus short string. It's right here. I just made a typo. So if I run this again, this should all work now. There we go. So this is a really nice problem. I will say this isn't the most efficient way to do this. I'll show you in a second a more a better way to do this one. But this, this whole exercise is about practicing how we use loops. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to write a slightly better way to do this. So one thing I want you to do is I want you to use the, the Java documentation. These are all the different methods that are contained in the string class. And it turns out there's a really nice one here. I do a little scan and it ends with, it generates a Boolean. So simply, it checks if the, the implied object, which is the string we call it with, ends with the past object, which is this string. And it returns true if they're the same, false if they're not. Really nice thing about this documentation, remember, if we click on the name of the method, it jumps down and it gives a bit more of a, a bit more detailed explanation of how this works. So remember that big long loop? It can be reduced down to that one line. Because the return type of this method is a boolean, and because this method generates a boolean, we can simply return else str dot end with s short str. And we hit go, and there it is. I hope this video helped. Remember, Working through these exercises is great practice for anyone interested in studying computer science at a higher level. So keep doing it. Have a great day.